Alright, in this video we're going to take a look at a typical electrochemical cell question on a test or exam for grade 12 chemistry. Um, we're asked to draw and completely label a standard electrochemical cell made with a zinc zinc sulfite half cell and a copper copper sulfate half cell. Include the overall reaction and cell potential. On a test or exam, I would actually give you a list of things to include in your diagram for labeling, but here we'll just do it together. So we've got a zinc strip, and it's dipped into zinc sulfate. So the zinc, the zinc there would be zinc 2 positive ion. So I'm going to call this metal electrode here the zinc strip, and it's dipped into one molar zinc two positive. That'll be from the zinc sulfate solution. I know it's one molar because we're talking about standard electrochemical cells. Standard cells have one molar concentrations for ions. They have one atmosphere pressure if there are gases involved. And the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So we have a zinc strip dipped into a colorless zinc sulfate solution. In the other half cell, we have a copper strip, so this will be this copper metal, and it's dipped into a blue-colored copper 2 plus solution, so one molar copper 2 positive. Now, the first thing I want to do is decide which of these two half cells, which of the two electrodes, will be the anode and which will be the cathode. To decide that, I'm going to take a look in my data booklet at the table of reduction potentials, standard reduction potentials. And I want to find two reactions on this chart. In one reaction, I want zinc with zinc 2 positive, And in the other reaction, I want copper and copper 2 positive. So let's find those two reactions. So the copper, copper 2 positive reaction is here. It's got a reduction potential of positive 0.34 volts. Further down on the table, we can see the zinc reaction. It's here. The zinc 2 positive gains electrons to make zinc a reduction reaction. And its reduction potential is negative 0.76 volts. Now what do I conclude from this? Well, this tells me that copper has a higher potential for reduction than zinc. And I know that reduction occurs at the cathode in the electrochemical cell. So therefore, since copper had the higher reduction potential, the copper electrode here is going to be the cathode. Whichever electrode had the higher reduction potential is your cathode. I can then say that this is where reduction will happen. Since the table I was looking at was a reduction table, I can simply copy this equation directly from the chart with its reduction potential beside it. So in this half cell, copper 2 plus ions are going to gain two electrons to make copper metal. And the reduction potential standard, the symbol E is for, is for cell potential, and the degree symbol means standard, so standard reduction potential was positive 0.34 volts. Now, over here at the other half cell, the zinc half cell, this is going to be the anode compartment, the anode electrode. This is where oxidation is going to happen. And since this is an oxidation reaction, if I look back at the chart, the zinc, elect, uh, zinc reaction, this was a reduction reaction. So if I want the oxidation process, I just write the equation backwards. Remember that if electrons are on the left side of the equation, it means they're being gained. And that means this was a reduction equation. If you read it backwards, the electrons will be on the product side of the equation. They're being lost. That'll be an oxidation process. This was a reduction potential. If you change its sign from negative 0.76 to positive 0.76, you'll have an oxidation potential. So what I want then is to reverse the equation on that chart. So zinc becomes 
zinc 2 positive and loses 2 electrons. And I'll write down the oxidation potential standard was positive 0.76 volts. Okay, the reduction potential positive 0.34 volts. So now I've got the two half cells labeled. We can combine the two half reactions rather easily because they each have two electrons. We don't need to multiply by anything. The electrons are going to cancel when I recombine. So my overall reaction that describes the cell would be zinc reacts with copper 2 positive. Those are my two reactants producing zinc 2 positive and copper metal. Those are my two products. The electrons canceled as they needed to do. The cell potential, the overall cell potential, will be the oxidation potential added to the reduction potential. So 0.76 volts for the zinc oxidation potential and positive 34 volts for the copper reduction potential. So the cell potential is positive 1.10 volts. Now remember, a positive cell potential means that this overall reaction is a spontaneous redox reaction. And that means its Kc value, its equilibrium constant, is huge, very, very large. So if you put a piece of zinc metal directly into a copper solution, copper 2 plus, this reaction is going to happen completely. One of those two reactants is going to get used up completely. You will definitely see a reaction. On the other hand, if you look at the reverse reaction, putting a piece of copper metal into a zinc solution, its cell potential would have been negative 1.10 volts because it's the reverse process, and it would have been a non-spontaneous process. There would not be a visible reaction occur there. Let's come back to our cell. We know that the cell potential was 1.10 volts. So I'm going to write that up here. That's my voltmeter. That's what that represents, voltmeter. We know that oxidation is the loss of electrons. So the anode is going to send electrons out of the zinc strip. Electrons are being lost here, so they come out of the anode. And they need to be gained over at the cathode. So the electrons always travel from the anode to the cathode in the cell. Now the labels on the outside of a battery are based on the direction that the electrons are flowing. Since electrons are coming out of the zinc terminal, the anode, the outside label of the battery is going to say negative there, meaning negative electrons are coming out of that terminal. The electrons are attracted to the copper terminal, so the logic is that will be labeled positive because it's attracting the negative electrons. On the other hand, if we examine what happens inside the battery, we know that or sorry, inside the cell, rather. We know that when you lose electrons, you actually become positive. So the inside of this half cell actually has a positive charge. When electrons flow into the cathode, it will acquire a negative charge inside. So the labels on the outside of the cell, the outside of the battery, are the opposite of the actual charges inside the battery. This tube connecting the two half cells is called your salt bridge, and it could simply be a strip of filter paper soaked in salt water, or a little bit fancier, it'll be a U-shaped glass tube filled with some kind of salt solution. A common salt solution for salt bridges would be something like potassium nitrate, which contains potassium and nitrate ions. It has to contain a salt like potassium nitrate so that those ions can move in the salt bridge. Remember, it's full of salt solution, so the ions are floating around in water in there, and they're able to move. It's an electrolyte. The anode is going to attract the anions from the salt bridge. So nitrate ions, the negative ions, the anions, will flow out of the salt bridge towards the anode compartment. And the positive ions, the cations, in this case potassium ions, will flow out of the salt bridge towards the cathode. The purpose of the salt bridge is to complete the electric circuit 
So if we look at the external circuit, negative electrons are flowing in a clockwise direction. But in the internal circuit, negative anions are flowing in that same direction. So negative charge is flowing in a clockwise direction in my diagram here. Sometimes it'll flow counterclockwise in these diagrams, but in this example it's flowing clockwise because the anode's on the left and the cathode's on the right. So the clockwise direction outside involves electrons flowing. Inside it, it involves anions flowing. Over time, because the zinc strip is being oxidized, this zinc metal strip is going to look like it's dissolving. Its mass is going to decrease, while the concentration of zinc in that cell is going to increase because you're producing zinc-2 positive ions. The opposite occurs in the cathode. Copper is precipitating in the copper electrode. So you're going to see the copper electrode get larger. It's going to get heavier the copper concentration is going to decrease because copper ions, cations, are being reduced. So there you have it. There's a completely labeled you know, electrochemical cell with the overall cell reaction and the cell potential calculated as well. If you want to try the next one on your own, pause the video and see if you can repeat what I just did. This time we're using a silver and silver nitrate half cell on the left and a nickel, nickel two positive half cell on the right. So the first thing I'll do is grab my reduction or my table of reduction potentials and I'll, I'll find those two half reactions. So I want silver with silver one positive that's this half reaction here. And then I want nickel with nickel 2 positive. And that's down here at this half reaction here. So nickel and nickel 2 positive. Of the two half reactions, it's clear that silver has the higher reduction potential. So silver is going to be my cathode in this example. I'll put the cathode here. It doesn't really matter, but I know that Silver is a colorless solution, one molar silver positive, and I know that nickel is a green colored solution, but it doesn't really matter which one you put on the left and which one you put on the right. Now you might be wondering how I knew that the nickel was nickel 2 positive and the silver was 1 positive. That's a little grade 11 chemistry. In nickel sulfate, sulfate is 2 minus. So the nickel there has to be 2 positive. But in silver nitrate, nitrate is 1 minus, so that silver is 1 positive. So that's where I got the charges on those two ions. So we saw silver had the higher reduction potential. Silver will be the cathode. This is where reduction happens. The reduction reaction taken directly from that chart was silver ions gaining electrons to make silver metal and the reduction standard potential was positive 0 0.80 volts. The anode is where oxidation happens. Oxidation, I have to reverse the equation that was on the chart. Nickel gets oxidized to form nickel 2 positive and loses two electrons. Remember, in reduction reactions, electrons are on the left. In oxidation reactions, they're on the right. If they're on the left, the electrons are gained, and reduction is the gain of electrons. If they're on the right, the electrons are being lost, and that's oxidation. The oxidation potential for nickel was, and now we have to reverse the sign that was on the chart because that was a reduction potential. So instead of negative 0.24, it's positive 0.24 volts. We can now write the overall chemical reaction for this cell. Now we have one small problem that we didn't have before. In the silver reaction there's only one electron, but in the nickel reaction there's two electrons. The electrons have to cancel, so we're going to double the silver equation. Instead of one silver ion, we'll have two silver ions reacting with that one nickel, and it's going to produce two silvers and one nickel two positive. 
Now remember that if you have to double or triple an equation, you do not do anything to its cell potential. Cell potential does not change when you multiply an equation by a number. If you reverse an equation, you change the sign of the potential, but if you multiply by something, the potential does not change. So the cell potential, the standard cell potential, remember the degree symbol means standard, one, one molar concentrations, 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere pressure for any gases involved, is the sum of the oxidation and the reduction potentials. So in this case, 0.24 volts plus 0 0.80 volts, the cell potential here is going to be 1.04 volts. So coming back to our diagram, the voltmeter at the top is going to display a voltage of 1.04 volts. We know that electrons leave the anode because that's where oxidation's happening, that's where they're being lost, and they're going to travel to the cathode. So there's the direction of the electron flow. The terminal where the electrons are leaving is labeled negative, because negatives are coming out of it, and the terminal that attracts the electrons is labeled positive on the outside. The internal charges are the opposite, though, because if you're losing electrons, you become positively charged. If you gain electrons, you become negatively charged. Our salt bridge, we could use different ions. Why don't we use um, this time instead of potassium nitrate, why don't we use sodium nitrate, just to mix it up a little bit, NO3 minus and Na plus. The salt for the salt bridge, there's a couple of requirements. It has to be soluble, you know, choosing an insoluble salt wouldn't be a good choice for a salt bridge because there wouldn't be ions that can move around. And then the ions should not chemically react with anything that's in your battery. So sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate, those are pretty good choices for most batteries. Now the cations, in this case the sodium, they're going to go to the cathode. So sodium ions come out of the salt bridge towards the cathode. The anions, the negative ions, the nitrate ions, they're going to go to the anode. Anions go to the anode, cations go to the cathode. Over time, the, the electrode where oxidation is happening, in this case nickel, this nickel strip is going to look like it's dissolving. Over time its mass will decrease, while over here the silver electrode's mass is going to increase because silver is precipitating on that electrode. The silver concentration though, because silver ions are a reactant, that concentration will decrease over time the nickel concentration, the nickel 2 positive concentration, will increase because it's a product. So if something in the overall reaction is a reactant, it will decrease over time. If something in the reaction is a product, it will increase over time. So the nickel electrode gets smaller while the silver electrode gets larger. The silver concentration drops, the nickel concentration increases. So there's your fully labeled electrochemical cell. Now remember, when a cell reaches equilibrium, if it reaches an equilibrium state, if the overall reaction reaches equilibrium, that's when your battery is said to be dead. A dead battery is one where the chemical reactions inside have reached a state of chemical equilibrium, so there's no longer a drive to make products. There'll be no longer a drive to push electrons through um, the cell. So there's a, two examples of drawing and labeling electrochemical cells and calculating cell potentials. You can be guaranteed that there will be a question like that on both your test and exam. And remember, too, that in, in those questions, I'm going to give you a list of things to include, like cathode, anode, reduction, oxidation, half reactions. I'll give you a list of what to include in your labeling.